Hi, I'm Mark Joseph and I'm a South Florida family law attorney. I've been doing these YouTube videos for a few years now and one of the things that keep coming up is child support. Whether it be the comments, those are my highest viewed videos, and just in everyday life, everybody wants to know about child support in Florida. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about five things that you may not have known about regarding child support in Florida. So if you find this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so that when we produce more videos, you get notified. The first thing is that Florida child support is actually based on a chart. Florida statute 61.30 actually has a chart of how child support is broken down based on the net income of the parents. Literally in that chart, you can see based on the net income of the parents and how many children the parents have, what the total amount of child support is presumed to be. Now, we're not gonna get complicated in this video on how that may deviate or adjust, but just keep in mind that this is essentially the start point for the overall child support amount. From that total amount, the court takes into consideration the percentage of that total net income each parent makes, and then looks at other factors such as time sharing, daycare, and health insurance, which we're gonna discuss later in this video. The second thing you should know is that there is three ways to establish child support in the state of Florida. I've discussed this a bit in some of my other videos, but the three main ways that you can establish child support in Florida is through an administrative child support action, a child support court case in family court, and a formal paternity or divorce action in the state of Florida. Now, depending on your facts and circumstances, doing it one way may benefit versus another. However, if you want to address all the issues in your family law case, by far the best way is to file a formal paternity action or divorce action in the Florida courts to establish not just child support, but all the issues that may be in your family law case. Now, this particular step, I get a lot of questions about. So if you're interested in learning more about this, please put a note in the comments. And if we get enough buzz about it, I'll do a specific video that discuss these three ways and its pros and cons, depending on if you're one parent or the other. The third thing that you may not have known about child support in the state of Florida is that it's based on your income. Now, it seems obvious, but there's a little bit more detail in that. It's based on the income of both parents, the net income. That statement can get very complicated in court when you look at certain things such as what happens if the parent is self-employed, what if they receive passive income from things such as real estate, a business, investments, or even what if one of the parents are being supported by their significant other. These things happen all the time in family court, but at the end of the day, the court has to consider and determine what is the net income of each parent before they go to that chart that I referenced to determine what child support is going to be. A bonus fact that you may not have known is that if a parent is able to work but doesn't earn a certain amount, the court will at minimum impute that parent to the minimum wage of the state that they live in. Sometimes people kind of presume that it's the minimum wage of the state of Florida. However, if the parent doesn't live in the state of Florida, the court will take the minimum wage of their state into consideration, as well as any state taxes, if that's applicable to them. The fourth thing you may not have known is that health insurance and daycare expenses are considered in the child support calculation. 
Now, I touched on it on my first fact, but one of the things that are looked at and built in to the child support calculation is if the child is on a parent's health insurance and if the child is in daycare or aftercare. So to understand this a bit deeper, we all know that child support isn't just the money that goes to the parent. There's different things that a child has to have in order for it to have a full life. Extracurriculars, health insurance, uncovered expenses that just child support doesn't get to. However, for purposes of child support as established in Florida law, the three things that are mainly considered is the base amount pursuant to that chart, daycare expenses, and health insurance. Those things can be built into the main child support amount that becomes enforceable by court order and can be subject to a rearage. Now, how health insurance is taken into consideration is a little bit complicated, but I'm gonna try my best to break it down. If you have parent A, who is paying health insurance for the child, let's say $100 a month. Parent B has to reimburse his percentage portion of that amount. So if parent A, let's say, makes $6,000 a month net, and parent B makes $4,000 a month net, parent A makes 60% of that total amount, parent B makes 40%. So parent B would have to reimburse 40% of that $100 so that in addition to whatever base child support is, that $40 gets taken into consideration. The same calculation can be done with daycare, but daycare typically is more complicated because unlike health insurance where usually one parent holds it, both parents can participate in daycare. So you can do the same formula and calculation. However, if both parents are contributing to the daycare, that also gets readjusted in the child support calculation. But the most important thing to keep in mind is that those things are in fact considered as part of the child support calculation. If you guys want me to go into more details about the health insurance, the daycare calculations, extracurriculars, private school, any of those things, please write it in the comments and we'll do another video that goes into that in more detail. The fifth thing that you may not have known about child support in Florida is that time sharing matters. We've discussed that there's a chart, we've discussed how it takes into consideration net incomes, and we've discussed the fact that health insurance and daycare is part of the equation. What's also a part of the equation, and in a lot of ways, the most important part of the equation is the time sharing between the parents. Under Florida law, when both parents are exercising what is called substantial time sharing, which is defined as 20% of the year or more in overnights, gross up starts to get applied to the child support number. Now, this is where a lot of family law cases get complicated. And it's important to note that depending on which way child support is being established, again, administratively, through child support court, or through regular family court, can determine how these facts are determined, how they're looked at, how they're considered, and if you can even change it. But for purposes of right now, it's definitely important to note that the time sharing matters. If you're curious about how time sharing is affected, depending on the type of family court case you have, whether it's being done administratively or through child support court, please let us know and we'll make a video about that as well. All right, so you guys stuck with me through this entire video. So I got for you a bonus fact that you may not have known about child support in the state of Florida. When originally establishing child support, you can actually go back up to 24 months 
from either when both parents did not reside together up to when the child was born, and it can even take in consideration pregnancy and birth cost. This is something that tends to surprise a lot of people. However, when you start to establish the paternity in the state of Florida, you can go back those periods of time, but you're also entitled to any credits and amounts that were actually paid during these periods of time as well, or for the monies that were spent during the pregnancy. So there you have it. Five plus things that you may not have known about child support in the state of Florida. Florida family law is very complicated. Despite as many videos as I can create, despite as many articles and websites that you have that can help you along the way, it is not an easy process. So if you or someone you know is having a Florida family law issue, please give us a call, set up a consultation, and let us help you. My name is Mark Joseph. Thank you for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.